Okay, folks, welcome to a quick commentary with regard to which stock I believe Pfizer or Moderna is going to be the best pure play COVID-19 vaccine stock. What we're going to talk about are the orders that are already known by each company. Then we'll talk a bit about the impact of these orders and future orders on each individual stock. Then we'll talk a little bit about the fundamentals of each company. And of course, we will go over the charts to discuss my opinion with regard to the technical analysis of each stock. And at the end, I'm going to leave you off with my opinion of which stock is the best pure play on COVID-19. Let's get to it. So let's begin with this chart in front of you. And we're going to segment out only Canada, the United States, Japan, and the EU because each company has a measurable footprint in each one of these markets. And the total orders at current in each one of these markets is at total 745 million doses of the vaccine. 37% of that goes to Moderna, which is in pink, and 63% of those orders go to Pfizer. Now, you might be saying, well, Bob, the, the obvious question here about who benefits the most from the COVID-19 vaccine is obviously Pfizer. No, it's not. And I'll share with you why. When you take a look at the revenue of Pfizer in the year 2019, the revenue for Pfizer was $51.75 billion. Whereas for Moderna in 2019, revenue was only $60.2 million for the year. So, the impact on sales by far will have a far greater influence on Moderna's stock rather than Pfizer's. Now, when you take a look at the fundamentals of Pfizer, let's face it, it's a good company. It's a safe company. When you take a look at the annual return on equity, it's a 26 spot five, huge, outstanding, probably one of the best in the industry. If you're looking for a dividend yield, it's sporting a 4.1% yield. Very respectable. Now, when you take a look at the sector of each, they're both competitors. However, they're in different industry groups. Whereas Pfizer is a larger medical ethical drug group stock. It's ranked number 11 in that group with Bristol-Myers Squibb being number one. Its accumulation distribution rating is at a D, meaning it's been under some distribution of late. It's earnings per share rating, not wonderful. The EPS rating on Investors.com goes from a scale of 1 to 99. Whereas when you take a look at a stock like Moderna, it's in the medical biomed, biotech group, basically biotech. Uh, it's ranked number 30 out of a group of 30, so not wonderful. Its EPS score is very weak, weaker than that of Pfizer. Its relative strength score meaning the strength of its overall stock as rated by IBD, we're going to talk more about this in a moment, is far stronger than that of Pfizer. And whereas the accumulation distribution rating of Pfizer was at a D, Moderna is far more favored by the market with a score of A-. minus. Now, we spoke earlier about Pfizer's outstanding return on equity, Moderna has no return on equity. What it does have that Pfizer does not is an incredible 826% quarter-on-quarter -quarter growth rate. That's massive. Whereas with Pfizer, sales last quarter were actually down. So you can see that while you have two stocks that are leaders in the COVID vaccine race, they are two completely different companies with Pfizer being a far more diversified company and Moderna being a far more pure play on the COVID-19 vaccine. Now let's talk about technicals. We're going to begin with a weekly chart of Pfizer. And last week, you can see that it spiked up higher on the news that its vaccine had a 90% success rate. Here's the problem, technically, is that we had broken out last week. We were unable to hold those gains. And we have given all of those gains back this week. That is a concern. 
Now, you might be saying, you know, Bob, you're the guy that's always complaining about don't buy a stock or chase a stock once it's trading above its third standard deviation Bollinger Band here in red where it pierced last week. And yes, you're absolutely right. Very astute to bring up that point. The problem is, is that I do not like when stocks break out and then fall back down into a trading range. That's what you call a bull trap or a breakout point failure. Does that mean that Pfizer is not going to break out? It's not going to do well? Of course it's going to do well. It's going to probably break out fairly soon because when you pull back to a monthly chart, things become a little bit brighter, assuming that we don't lose much more ground on the month. We're very close to a major breakout on Pfizer. We have been in a multi-year consolidation. We're very close to a breakout, but we're not there yet. Now, looking at a monthly chart of Moderna, well, things become a lot more interesting and a lot more bullish. Let's update this. We have far less data on Moderna, so that's why the charts look different. So you can see here that assuming that we close above this line in blue, we have a breakout this month, a very, very strong chart. Now we could drill down to a weekly chart and you could see here's our gap up. We actually even gapped up last week in sympathy with Pfizer and we broke out last week. Now this week, what are we doing? We're trading above the two standard deviation Bollinger Band in green and we're kissing the three standard deviation Bollinger Band in red. That doesn't give me the warm and fuzzies, to be honest with you, if I wanted to go opening up a position here. The time to have really done that was you could have nibbled back here on this higher low off of support and then added more in a breakout last week. Right now, to me, the horse has left the barn, short term anyway. And when you drill down to a now a daily chart, things get a little bit worse. We have RSI at 78 spot 75. It can go higher. But when you take a look at the share price, it's very extended relative to the third standard deviation Bollinger Band. In short, we're not supposed to be there. When you look back in history, in case you're questioning my rationale here, when you go back in history, take a look at prior times where we've been up at these levels. It didn't end well. Back here as well, May of 20. It didn't end well. Back here as well. Right. Does that mean that Moderna is going to crash? No, of course not. So let's talk about which stock I believe is the best pure play on the COVID-19 vaccine. Hands down, Moderna is the number one stock in the ring. Why? Well, Pfizer is a massive company and they have dozens of other drugs. And whatever value that the COVID vaccine brings to its bottom line It'll be minuscule relative to the impact that any profits from the COVID-19 vaccine will have on Moderna. And keep in mind, of those sales of 745 million units that we know of already and only growing, Moderna, which is a significantly smaller company than Pfizer, already has 37% of those sales. That's in the books. Now... We can't argue that Moderna is a significantly more volatile stock than Pfizer. Add to that, Moderna does not pay a dividend, whereas Pfizer does pay a dividend. So if you're a retired investor or one that doesn't want the volatility that a stock like Moderna could bring, Pfizer's your stock. It gives you the exposure to COVID. However, you're not exposed to the volatility that Moderna could bring. Now, me personally, I'll be looking for a pullback on Moderna. I'll be talking about this with members in the coming days of as to where we want to enter. Right now, to be honest with you, Moderna is setting up as a short-term short, only because it's becoming a little bit overbought, and I just don't feel comfortable with buying it at these extreme levels. However, we're going to get a pullback. If it's a nice orderly pullback, down to a support level, then I'd be more than happy to step up and then begin to accumulate shares. We send out alerts to members. And in closing, folks, if I could ask you to smash that like button, I truly appreciate it. Down below, a gift to you is my video tutorial course on my five top most favorite candlestick 
patterns. Join us live each Sunday night and Thursday night on YouTube. There's a link below. Enter your email address. Get alerted 15 minutes prior to us going live. And remember, trade the charts, not the hype.